after the the open hours live from Budapest, you had a panel over there, and you were on the panel. And what I were was. you talking about? I was uh, well answering generic questions about 96 boards and the 96 boards hardware, and specifically about the Qualcomm Dragon Board. So the Qualcomm Dragon Board, I've been involved in Dragon Board work since the beginning. Five so years. When did you start the Dragon Board? I started the Dragon Board about seven years ago, and five years ago, you interviewed me at Computex in Taipei. And at that time, we uh, showed off the first Dragon Board, which was an 8660 dual core based. But now we have this generation of Dragon Board, which is Snapdragon 410 based, quad core, 1.2 gigahertz. This is one of the ultimate ways to get into 64 bit ARM. But this right. is the and develop with that. This is a 64-bit ARM. It has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and GPS right on the board. You don't even have to go out and add anything to get it up and running. This particular individual is one of the early ones. It doesn't have the shielding over top of the processor, so you can see the processor. So this is a show-and-tell demo unit. Cool. And who are you? Uh, I'm Jean-Marc. I'm following the Open Hours community, and I'm using the. The 410C, which is uh, for me an excellent board. What do you I'm, do with it? I'm using it as uh, an Android system and build application that is run, are running on uh, on that board. Uh, recently, I just made a BLE, so a Bluetooth Low Energy uh, uh, col Collector uh, Gateway, and then this uh, all my my sensors are connected to that board, and the board is bringing up the information to the cloud. Is it easy to use? Oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. you use it as you you, you will use a, a phone and you you write your Android application exactly as it would be for by your phone. As a matter of fact, I'm using it on the phone and test it on the phone and test it on a 410C, which is working perfect. You're actually rendering it onto your phone, I mean onto your watch, aren't uh, you? Yeah, okay, I, I do that too. Uh, one of those uh, sensor is going to this this watch and show me the temperature in my my room directly to the watch and show me also where I'm and so on. But where are you based? Everything through... Where do you live? I live in Switzerland. In and, Switzerland. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and then you have the open hours every Thursday? Every Thursday, and yeah. You, mm. And you're based in, in the US? Yeah, so based on the, the west coast of the United States, South California, San Diego, actually. Uh, it's 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. UTC. And I know I was saying a bunch of, of, of it, you know, earlier on the panel, but John Mark is, is kind of like the core community there. He's, he's there every episode, asking questions, contributing to the forums, and just kind of, you know, being a good guy. <laughs> I am, I am I'm going to five, five in the afternoon for me. So they, this guy drink the coffee, they always have a mug with them, and I, am, <laughs> I should be allowed to drink a beer, but I don't do it in front of everybody because oh, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's, for me, it's, it's the right time for a beer. So. so what kind of questions did you ask uh, Lawrence at, the, at this panel? I was, I was curious about the future of you know, Qualcomm involved in the Dragon Board series, I guess you could say, or the Dragon Board products. And um, I'm kind of wondering if, you know, what's the future of Dragon Board 410C? I know that, you know, what was it in the last Connect? It was announced that the 410 series chip is now Snapdragon 410E, extended life. I mean, is, yeah. there's a lot of movements, right? So, you know, over the lifespan of this board, it's gone from barely working to it now supports Windows 10 IoT. It supports Debian. It supports Ubuntu or various other operating systems. Open Embedded. Uh, open Embedded. Uh, they all run on this board, which is really nice. Uh, you don't know what you want to do. You put Android on the board, and you, if you're an Android developer, put Android on it and develop Android apps. So how do you convince all these guys to put it on it? Or is it just because it's a board, it's available, it's affordable, it's, it's open? That it, means they will support incrementally, it. Incrementally, everybody has said, this is a good board, and picked it up for support. And you also talking about some something like a DSP at some point? What were you asking? Ah, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, so throughout the community, we've noticed that there are many people who are interested in getting access to the DSP, and because you know Qualcomm has such a nice chip, they want access to Qualcomm's DSP. <laughs> it's not surprising, but uh, that was my question: was you know, is there any efforts and are we moving towards towards possibly getting that? You know, and I think exactly. Lawrence wants the same thing. <laughs> uh, there is a DSP in the chip. It's a very small DSP, but we need to do the work to enable it, which is make the DSP compiler available, teach you how to install the DSP compiler, how to build a binary for the DSP, how to load the binary from 
the ARM cores into the DSP, how to get the DSP to run your binary, how to get results back to the ARM core. So there's a whole flow and many steps in the process and we're working on enabling the users to use the DSP in here. So then you can augment, there's quite significant compute power on the four cores, but you can augment, augment that with further compute on the DSP. Because when I go to these trade shows and I try to do interviews at the Qualcomm booth, I think they talk about crazy things they're doing on the DSP, like uh, machine learning kind of stuff and uh, image recognition. Is that where it is? So some of the later generation Qualcomm chips have much more powerful DSPs than the DSP on this one. So they can do a lot more, but it's a first step to get access to the DSP on this one. And you can do some of those things, maybe not as fast, maybe not as good, but it's there. And there's definitely coming some more Dragon Boards in the future, right? That we certainly are working on bigger, faster Dragon Boards, more memory, more I.O. features, more speed. And you'll be really happy when we get the new Dragon Boards. So you say you started the first Dragon Board seven years ago? So seven what years. You, mm -hmm. So what is your... Um, what is your opinion about the whole 96 boards and putting Dragon Boards okay. within that? So 96 boards has done a wonderful job of standardizing the hardware. So now I get, instead of me doing everything, I have third parties out building mezzanine cards for I.O. So this particular one has an Arduino on board and you can see all the Arduino connections. You can also see that there are Seed Studio connectors and on this side, it mates to the 96 board connector. So this becomes a I.O. module that you can now stack all your favorite Arduino I.O. modules, motor drivers, sensors, whatever you like. We have another partner, Linker has built this board. This board has Linker connectors on it. Again, it mates with the 96 boards connector on the bottom. This one also has a 10-bit A to D converter that runs on SPI, so now you can actually do analog to digital conversion directly into the Dragon board or any of the other boards. So those are some examples of some of them. This one is an audio mezzanine card, and we've added a headset jack, a microphone, and we've taken all of the low speed connector peripherals and brought them out to larger connectors and level shifted them up to 3.3 volts because a lot of the makers have a lot of legacy hardware that runs at 3.3 volts, whereas 96 boards runs at 1.8 volts, which is where all the new sensors will be. And uh, one of the uh, reasons people really uh, like the Dragon Board a lot is uh, there's something called Freedrino, right? And that's, that's, a, that's a differentiator in terms of, uh, you know, in, in the ARM world, there's not that many open source uh, performance uh, GPU. So we have Freedrino, which gives you very good performance out of the GPU. And tomorrow, you'll see demos of Freedrino running and video on a cube, rotating the cube as it's decoding video. Only one core, 10% to decode video, because we actually have hardware accelerated video decode pipelines available now. That wasn't available when we first started, and that's some of the things the community has brought up and really improved how good the Dragon Board is and the ecosystem around the Dragon Board. That's why there's so many different types of Linux on the Dragon Board, right? Because uh, they wouldn't want to try to support it if they cannot figure out how to use the GPU. Yeah, exactly. So th this gets you va basically all the variants of Linux will come up on the board. Um, what do you want to do next? Cool. So you like the, the Linara Connects and Linara I, in general? I, I love coming to the Connects and I love all the work that Linaro has done to enable the ecosystem and the community. How many have you been to actually, Lawrence? I think this is only my third one. Okay, so me too. It's my yeah. third. Yeah. Let me just walk around here because this, where we're standing here, it's like phenomenal. It's a beautiful place. Oh, yeah. This is a crazy nice place here in Budapest. So uh, it's pretty cool, right? What do you think? No, I'm loving it. So yeah, I mean, so I've been to three Kinects so far. It's my third, uh, what was it? First one was in Bangkok, Thailand. Was that beautiful? Or not? Also amazing. Yeah. So I mean, our, uh, the people who are in charge of planning this event uh, do, an, uh, do a great job. They right? find the cool place and not too expensive, right? Uh, I guess. Well, Thailand was amazing. I mean, yeah. And Thailand is not very expensive. The hotel, 
was, I mean, I, is there a 20 star hotel? I mean, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, and then then one after that was in Las Vegas. Also fun. I mean, you know, you bring gambling into was that the in mix. Circus Circus. No, it wasn't at Circus no. Circus. Yeah. Okay. I, in fact, I haven't been there in a long time. But it was fun, yeah, definitely. And and Lawrence was on the panel over there too. Wish we could have got yeah. John Mark. John Mark was on the Blue Jeans call behind us during that open hours. So yeah. Blue Jeans, does that work good? This blue is jeans. how you do all the open hours, right? So yes, we do do Blue Jeans on all, our, uh, we use Blue Jeans for all of our open hours episodes. It's been very good so far. I think our, our contract allows us to have 100 endpoints. So we've only maxed out, I think, once or twice. And one of those times was during Lawrence's demo uh, using the Dragonboard 410C and Scratch and Arduino and built all these layers on top to, to eventually have the, a game, a brick breaker game. So do people like say, push a voice button and say, please let me talk, please let me talk, and you choose who gets to they talk? They are free to talk whenever they want, they actually. They talk on top of each other. There's 100 people. How can you do that? They're pretty polite. Okay. They take turns. <laughs> take turns. We haven't had issues yet. It, it'll be coming sooner or later, I'm sure. So it's been going on for a, kind of like a couple of years in IEC Sports, but it feels like it could, this could be the point where suddenly it could go huge. If some things fall into place and yeah. potentially a new one and stuff. Uh, there, it, there are, you know, there's multiple vendors building boards for 96 boards, both the CPU cards and the I.O. modules. And because 96 boards is the first open specification for, I'm going to call it Internet of Things boards or small community boards. You know, it's not a big specification like a Windows PC. It's not a little tiny proprietary specification. It's not a specification that's owned by somebody and they can change it at will. It is truly an open standard. And it's got to be very cool for a company like Qualcomm to be engaged in with Lenaro. Uh, to get all their stuff like uh, in this crazy world of uh, ARM, and but the, all these optimizations that it's I mean it sounds like crazy magic science that these guys are doing here, <laughs> like finding how to optimize a, a chip. It sounds really cool. Getting everything turned on has been lots of fun. I we wanted. Are, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, ahead, Robert. No, I just wanted to show something real quick, Lawrence, if you'd mind pulling up the dragon board. Uh, one of our our people here who made the the shirt this connect it's it's actually a dragon board shirt so uh pretty interesting john mark's wearing one yeah what do you think this is a nice shirt is that the coolest lenaro shirt ever it's it's pretty cool it's uh it's it's definitely got its quirks <laughs> but yeah uh, I, I, I was Le uh, ubuntu right here who, who got a, got this one for us um definitely nice yeah nice and uh, ubuntu runs really smoothly on the dragon board it does yes yeah I, I use Ubuntu even when I want to make small changes to the kernel. I will recompile the kernel on the Dragon Board, self-hosted. I don't go off to a PC or my laptop to recompile. Run it native. So it you is use that this stable. as your main computer? I don't use it as my main computer. It doesn't have a display and keyboard that's easy to carry around like my laptop. But I do use it for my development. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. <laughs> yeah, this right here. So this is a little demo that I built with a 3D printer. So I printed a 3D case for the dragon board. And you can see the connectors for the dragon board Actually, poking under the case. Too. And yeah. then we have a four and a half inch wave share monitor, which I also printed a 3D case for. And then we hinged them together with a hinge that's printed 3D at the same time. And you can connect the monitor to the dragon board with the cables. Yeah, pretty simply, just right there, USB, and then the top one's the power plugs in. Is it a battery? No, there, there's no battery. The dragon board powers the screen, so. Yeah. And then the HDMI. So you, you so, need to plug so it you, in. You plug the normal yeah. power adapter into the dragon board, and the whole thing comes up. Really nice. nice. Can you mass produce this? No. No. However, however, the files for this are available on Thingverse if you want to download them and print your own. Cool. So that's your laptop. That could be. <laughs> it, it, it's almost a laptop. <laughs> yeah. All you need is. Uh, let me see. Do I have it right here? Do you have all a keyboard, need, Robert? It's one of these. All right. right there. <laughs> and there yeah. you have it. A Dragon Board 410C <laughs> laptop on the go desktop uh, machine for uh, doing all your programming on the actual board. Uh, on, the board. on the board. Re rebuild the kernel right on the board, install a new kernel on the board, and 
bring it up and see your new hardware features or your whatever kernel development you've been doing up and running right away. No waiting. Mm -hmm. Hopefully soon there will be a Linaro Connect where all the engineers have uh, only ARM part devices to do all their work. Someday, it's coming, step by step. We're, we're getting better. But it's moving very fast. It is. Cool.